fire. Flood and then fire. Now, here's the news flash, ready? Uh, Jerusalem, sorry, uh, New York, as of course we believe is Babylon. We're going to turn to Revelation 18 in a minute. New York will be destroyed. I'm going to tell you how it's going to work now. Uh, it's going to happen by flood and then by fire, just the way it happened in Nineveh. Now, here's the news flag, the big one. September the 11th is when it happened. It already happened. Now I'm going to tell you how that happened. Okay, Revelation 18, are you there? Revelation 18. Now, we all studied Revelation 18 recently. We're not going to read the whole chapter. But we do know that we see a city destroyed. We saw all the elements of that city. And we see that it clearly lines up with New York. But look down here, please, now. And we're going to find out, because it says throughout the chapter that she's destroyed suddenly. It happens in one hour. Uh, and, and then it says here, uh, oh, I should have got a verse ready for you. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 18, are you there yet? Yes. Okay, verse 8. Look at verse 8. Therefore shall the plagues come in one day. Now watch how the plagues come. Death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. So we see that in one day. I should have seen this sooner. You'll forgive me, won't you? I should have saw this sooner. I only saw it this week. The one day destruction happens and there are a series of tragedies that take place that lead up to it being burned with fire at the end. Isn't that what it just said? Yeah, right. First, in one day it says death, and then mourning, and then famine, and then utterly burned with fire. So I was mistaken on one point, and that is that it wasn't going to be no nuclear bomb going off. It wouldn't be a sudden fiery exchange that destroys Babylon. It is a, a series of tragedies that happen throughout a single day. You see how that works? Right. Now, how does the tragedy start? What, what is the impetus that causes the dominoes to fall that day for Babylon? Well, the, the angel told us, and I was so dumb I missed it. Verse 21. <laughs> You're going to find out how. What is, what is that thing that causes the first domino to fall that brings about this massive destruction to the eastern part of the United States, chiefly New York? Verse 21 tells you. And a mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone. Now, what's a millstone? A millstone is something that is a very large honed rock that is honed into a thick disc and they would put a point in the middle of it and they would, they would roll upon a rock and it would grind up flour and you know and they'd make they make a they would mill goodies right so in other words the angel is now going to give us a clue exactly what will be the the impetus that will cause the destructive dominoes to fall on that day and that impetus, he likened them to a great, now millstones are already great. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as a small millstone. They were all really big. So he's saying, this is a really, really, really big one. A real big rock. So he takes this big rock to illustrate how the destruction takes place, and he throws it into the sea. That's what it says. He cast it, he cast it into the sea, saying, thus, with violence, Shall that great city, be Babylon, be thrown down and shall not be thrown at all? So what, what causes Babylon to be thrown down is initiated by a large rock or rocks that are thrown into the sea. Now, when a large rock is thrown into the sea, immediately what happens? Waves. And the bigger the rocks, the bigger the waves. In fact, you have what you would call a tsunami. Rocks, large rocks falling into the sea, causing a tsunami, and then that tsunami hits the city. The city is instantly damaged fatally by a massive tsunami, and then immediately you have death. What did the verse 8 say? Death, obviously, first. 
Then morning, got some survivors, right? Not everyone dies in the tsunami. Morning, and obviously got people that live, that have relatives inland. They heard about their cousins all got wiped out. So there's morning, okay? Famine, now there's no food. Now the port is broken. You can't, you can't bring the imports in anymore. Famine. And then utterly burned with fire, of course. The last thing to take place, once the tsunami washes back out to sea again, a couple hours later, then the city is left without water, completely destroyed, then fire sets in. The nuclear power plants melt down. There are several of them that will get completely destroyed by this tsunami if it were to happen. And so fire would be the last thing. It all happened on one day. Isn't that a high definition, miraculous description? Yeah. Now, here's the news for this week. Well, this is, this, this is not news, by the way. On September the 11th, <laughs> on, Sept on September the 11th, though, though Bill McGregor was not aware of it, I did not know that this is how it rolled out, neither did jo Jonah how it rolled out. On September the 11th, do you know what happened? No, I'm going to tell you what happened. There is an island across the ocean called La Palma. It is part of the Canary Islands archipelago. That's our Canary Islands. You can see it's just off the coast of Africa over here. See that? Okay, that's where it's located. An archipelago of islands. This is La Palma right here, the one northwest north, uh, of the archipelago. There's an upcoast of the southern tip of that island. On September the 11th, a rash of hundreds of earthquakes shook that island. Then on September the next day, the 12th, the volcano erupted as a result of the earthquakes. The earthquakes were first, happened on September the 11th. Then fire became the birth of this earthquake. Now, what I'm showing you, by the way, dear friends, happens to be from the website that reports seismological activity all over the world. And the red dots will, are showing you the points, the central points of those earthquakes that took place. Hundreds and hundreds of them have taken place over the last month and they're ongoing right now. Do you notice something strange about the points? Anyone notice something unusual about the, about the red dots? The red red. Yeah, they're, they're in a pattern, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, if you go to any other place on the earth right now, they got a lot of earthquakes that are going on in Crete right now. Yeah, hundreds of them going on there too. You go to this, you take the same wiki and you and you zoom out and then you go over to Crete and then zoom in. I've seen this. You zoom into Crete and they're all natural scattered around the red dots. Yeah. But here on the Palma, you know what we're, show, we're showing you is that this is a man-made phenomenon. <clears throat> There's some kind of technology that they're that they're using, whether it's whether it's subterranean or whether it's coming from a from a from a satellite, where they are causing earthquakes to take place. And notice that there's multiple hits on one dot. It's happening over and over and over again on those same dots, over and over again. You read the statistics on the website, you'll see it's hundreds and hundreds of times on all the same dots, over and over and over again. That's how that earthquake is happening. Now, so you're talking about a man-made, engineered earthquake that's taking place that gave birth to the volcano. Now, watch where this goes. Now, watch where this goes. Here is a picture of an elevation of La Palma Island. And you can see, this, this is a, a real photograph. You can see the lava flowing, see that? See the lava flow? So what you've got on La Palma is you've got, you've got a, 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 a kind of a 90 degree turn where there's this ridge on the top of a high mountain ridge. This area here is about the size of Manhattan. It's a massive area. And it's a, it's a fairly steep slope. And there's a fault line all along there and running down the ravine into here. And that's where all the earthquakes are happening, right down there. Now, there is a documentary done in 2014, done by National Geographic, where they discussed this geolo geological phenomenon, and they said, What's going to happen? It happened already millions, they say millions and millions of years ago. You know, that's of course malarkey, but it happened in the past where they had, they had a, a, a landslide and it caused a tsunami that destroyed North America. Now, there was nothing there but cavemen, they say, so it was no big deal. But now it's going to happen again. And they said it could happen anytime. And if this fault line ever broke, the landslide, it would be like Manhattan sliding down a, sleep, a steep slope, crashing into the ocean, 
and causing a tsunami, the waves would reach all the way across the Atlantic and the entire coast of North America would be hit with upwards of a 500 foot wave. 500 feet high wave. We're talking about maybe a 30 story wave that would come crashing in. Now, so here's the map according to the geologists. Here's, what, here's exactly what the tsunami would look like. And it, it would take eight hours, eight hours to cross the ocean in one day. Is that right? So once, once the landslide happens, there's the, there's the white area showing the first wave. And then, and then you can see it spreading out and spreading out and spreading out, spreading out, spreading out, spreading out and spreading out, spreading out, and, hitting, and then it starts hitting land on the other side of the ocean. So we're talking Florida, we're talking, we're talking 30, 30 meter high waves. That's, that, that annihilates all of the coastal cities of North America and the Caribbean. Look at the Caribbean. Wiped out. Caribbean underwater completely. Only the high mountains might miss out on it. So we are talking about an absolute disaster. Now, here's what I'm saying. You see how those dots are all lined up? This is man-made, folks. Now, you want more proof that it's man-made? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Okay. Now, don't laugh, although it is kind of funny. Okay? But you know Bart Simpson? All right? Good old Bart Simpson. I hope you don't watch it, because it's horrible, awful television. Because there's evil people that run. By the way, did you know this? That the, the people that own Bart Simpson, that make it and own, the, that make money on it, are the same people that produce the new international version of the Bible. Wow. Did you know that? Jews, all of them, by the way. So that these people made the new international version. You know, a little blaspheming punk on TV. You know, the same people that made the new NIV Bible. That's the same people. Now look at this. This happened before 9-11. This, this happened like, this, this episode, I think it was in the early 90s. The Bart Simpson cartoon, here's a, here's a picture of his sister, that's his sister's hands, holding up a poster of a trip that they wanted to take to New York. And Bart was gonna pay for it with money. But notice, do you notice something about that that's unusual? You're talking about a, 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 what, what the Satanists call a, a predictive programming event, where before 9-11, You've got New York, 9-11, obviously there's something being said here. And notice a folded billfold in front of it. Now, so first off, that is predictive programming about what Satan was about to do in New York. But wait a minute, look at the, look at the folded money. Did you know that you can do this with a U.S. $20 bill? With a $20 bill, U.S., here's what you do. You fold it in the shape of a five-pointed star. So when you unfold it, it looks like a, a devil star. You fold it up, and, you, and what you've got is you've got the Twin Towers being destroyed. Wow. And that was done before, obviously, 9-11. You see the picture, how similar they are? Look, look at that picture. Look at the fire building down one building and less on the other one. You see that? How, that is absolute, that is supernatural visual prediction of 9-11 long before it happened. Yeah. You don't think that those guys didn't know what they were doing? That was all, that was a manufactured disaster that took place. That was planned ahead of time, proven by the money. That's not the only time that the money has done that. There's another time that, that, that you can see that, where, where you have, um, okay, we'll have this one. Now look, so here we have a $10 bill. So we know that Satan likes to brag ahead of time about stuff that he's about to do, right? And show it to tease the public. Because that's just how, that's the bravado that evil people always have. Okay? Here's a way to that's, yeah, that's, that, that actually is a Jewish thing, where they, they're absolved from guilt when they, when they tell it publicly ahead of time. That's a, that happens on Yom Kippur, that's part of the tradition, where ahead of time, they, if they say what they're going to do, even though it's hidden, then that means they're not guilty, they're forgiven of the sin. That's what Yom Kippur is all about. Now, so watch this. You take a $10 bill, you fold it, you've got a tsunami flooding over a building in New York. And there's a Hollywood movie that shows a New York building getting, getting hit by a tsunami. And it's exactly like the $10 bill. Are they predicting a tsunami hitting New York? They sure are. Now watch this. Here's another one. Here's another picture from a dollar, from a, this time from a $100 bill, where you're seeing a tsunami. This is a famous Hollywood movie, that same movie, where you see the buildings here, the buses and everything in the foreground, and the water is rushing down the street. Look at there it is there again. There's the buildings, 
the water rushing in like a cloud on both sides of the street. There's the vehicles and the, and the chaos on the road in between. Exactly predicted. Now, that's not all. Bart Simpson, remember him? Oh boy, you ready for this? Because so you've seen that we got Bart Simpson and the dollar bills seem to have notes on what's going to happen. Is that right? Yeah. Well, Bart Simpson does the same. So, so we're talking about a tsunami hitting New York. If it's in the money, it's also in Bart Simpson, folks. Man alive! I hope you're ready for this. Going to knock his socks off. This blew my mind, fella. There is an episode in the in the Bart Simpson program where, and I, and I watched the video, you can look at it, where if, just randomly, somebody sends a bird to go fly to the Canary Islands. And what the bird does is instead of going out the window, he flies into the house to where they have the family globe, he spins the globe to the Canary Islands. He's on here, he points to the Canary Islands. Kind of funny, right? Whatever, whatever story that was. But notice something. You see something unusual about La Palma? See La Palma? It's actually pretty, this is actually a pretty accurate drawing. If you look at, if you look at a real picture of, um, do I have it here? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't, okay. If you look at a real picture of the, of the Canary Islands, which I don't exactly have here, you'll see that the little cartoon is pretty accurate, except for one little detail. Do you see a detail missing about La Palma? And there's real La Palma? Do you see a chunk missing? Yeah, I see it, yeah. There's a bottom. So you're seeing this chunk missing out of the island right there. Do you know where the fault line is, where the chunk of the island is that they expect to fall in the ocean? It's right there where that piece is missing out of their drawing. Oh. On the Canary Islands. So you're talking about Bart Simpson once again, strikes again, and tells us that the La Palma phenomenon is actually going to take New York City out, and it started on September 11th. Now here's another evidence for you. There's a cathedral in downtown New York, and on that cathedral they got beautiful columns. And at the top of those columns, it tells the story of New York City. Beautifully done. Did you see something unusual about those columns? Here's New York City getting hit by a giant tidal wave. Here's New York City get, getting hit by a tsunami, and the buses and the cars getting tossed around in the water. That's in a cathedral. That's at a cathedral in New York City. So are we saying then, what we're saying is that just like 9-11 was an engineered attack, satanically planned and pre-announced pre ahead of time, we're saying that the, the disaster that is brewing right now in La Palma is the thing that will destroy New York City. The Bible said it because it's a series of events that happened during the day as the result of a giant, huge millstone being thrown into the sea and causing a tsunami that wipes it out. So my, my word is back on that you folks in New York, get out of there. Because it started on September the 11th, that's when it all started. And it was imminent, it could have happened at any moment. As soon as they started those earthquakes, it could have happened that day. They might have been, they might have been planning for it to happen that day, in fact. But, it, but it's, 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 it didn't happen that day. So they're doing it over and over and over again. They're making the earthquakes happen until it finally does fall. Because, the, because it is an engineered event that's going to be brought about as in the destruction of New York City, just the way the Bible said it would be. Here's, what's this? Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, there. Oh, this is this, this area. Here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, where is it? Here we go. So there's, there's the Bart Simpson cartoon version, and there's, there's reality. Now look, that, that, that's pretty accurate cartoon drawing. It's not, it's not that far off. Man, like, I hardly even knew about the Canary Islands existing, much less how to draw them. Yeah, there's our boy doing the, 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 the Bart Simpson cartoon. He did a pretty accurate look at the other islands. The, the shape is pretty close. Yeah, but La Palma is missing a chunk. Do you think they didn't know about that chunk missing? If they drew all the other islands that accurately, why did they do La Palma inaccurately with the chunk missing? Yeah. That, and that's the chunk that is planned to come off and fall into the ocean. That is exactly the piece that has the fall line that's going to bring about the destruction. So we're, we're, the idea here, friends, is this. Uh, the Bible, you're looking at a miraculous book here, not only because of the tuning fork phenomenon, but because of the Bible predicting and showing the events that are taking place before our eyes exactly in high definition detail right in front of your blessed face. So if that's the case, the most important thing the Bible has to say about stuff is how to get your carcass out of hell and into heaven. Because hell is where you're headed. Yeah. If you're born, then you got sin. 
And because of that sin, you get old enough, you're going to become responsible, and you die, you go to hell. That's what's going to happen to everybody, unless you get saved. Now, the way you get saved is you realize that Jesus came to this world, lived a sinless life, born of a virgin, died on the cross, and paid for the awful price of your sin there that day. He paid the penalty on that cross with his blood. Your only hope of getting out of hell and into heaven is not by reforming, not by changing your ways, not by repenting of your sin. Although those are good things to do and will apply your efforts, but that's not going to save you. you. You need to realize that you're a condemned sinner in front of a holy God. And then you humbly come to him in a prayer and you ask him to save you based on the work that Jesus did on the cross and not based on the work that you think you've done but on the work that he did and you tell him that in a prayer whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast why don't you get saved right now if you haven't been it's just a simple matter of calling on the Lord and asking to save you and then you can leave this place leave this computer on your way to heaven instead of being continuing on your way to hell where you're naturally headed like everyone is unless you get saved so here's a prayer why don't we all pray together now Lord I pray for anyone who's not saved right now in the sound of my voice the Lord they would hear what we're saying and get saved right now and not wait may they trust you as personal Savior right now now our heads but eyes closed if you'd like to get saved here's a prayer you can borrow this prayer and if you want if you mean it you can get saved right now Here's the prayer. You join me, would you? Dear Lord Jesus, I understand that I am a sinner. And I believe that because I'm a sinner, I deserve to go to hell. No matter how good I try to be, I'm a hell-deserving sinner. I'm unworthy of heaven. But Jesus, I understand now that's why you died. You died to pay for my unworthiness. You paid for my sins. And so with that blood, I now claim that blood as my only valid token for entrance to heaven. That's all I've got. And praise God, that's all I need. Thank you for saving me. Got one more for you before we dismiss. Remember it said, we'll turn to Revelation 18, says the ships that stood afar off watched as the city was destroyed. Remember that? Yeah. That's Revelation. Now, what happened to the ships that were closer? They got destroyed. You know how tsunamis work, right? The tsunami is only a lull in the water until it hits shallow water. And then it mounts up to a huge wave. So the Bible said that the ships that are far off, I witnessed the destruction without being destroyed. Yeah. But the ships that were close, they're apparently not there anymore because they get hit by a huge wave. Amazing. Absolutely amazing yeah. how the Bible is wow. miraculous. All right. Yeah, because it's Revelation 18, the destruction of New York. Why do you believe it's coming? The, the date is, is not to be tinkered with because obviously the date is still valid because that is the actual date that the, the, the whole thing started. But so in a, in a sense, it, it, the destruction was determined on September the 11th. And the, the alchemy that would bring about New York's destruction began to be boiled in the cauldron of God's wrath on September the 11th. That's true. So, Bill, so okay, so let's say now this hope, let's say New York is going to be destroyed. So, I mean, nope, we don't. There'll be no, no people, nothing. Yeah, well, 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 there might be some survivors. I think that, I think Jared Kushner is going to be a survivor. I think Jared Kushner is going to be in the flood. He's going to get his head hurt, and he's going to survive. This, or he's going to resurrect. He's going to say that he died. Jared Kushner is the Antichrist. He's the Antichrist, and and Daniel chapter eleven tells us that with the arms of a flood, he shall be broken. Yea, the Prince of the Covenant. So it, it seems to me that Jared himself is going to get injured in the flood, because he lives there, of course, since it's his own area. So I think he's going to be injured maybe on the ground. Um, maybe he'll be saved from drowning. Right? Now, it does say head damage, so he's going to get his... If you get your head damaged and you nearly drown, that's true, if you're in water. Something's going to happen to Jared, I think, that's going to... Because he's supposed to die and come back, allegedly, right? Yeah, that's right. So, by a head wound. So, yeah, you get, man, you get a tsunami hit, and you can get hit by a bus, it's like, you know, no problem. I mean, it, it, Getting the head wound is easy for the hitting of a tsunami.